Sunday School, Sundays at 8.30 a.m. Virtual Bible Study, Wednesday at 7 p.m. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Worship Center for Christ, 5th Pastoral Church Anniversary, Sunday, October 8th at 3 p.m. with guest preacher, our very own Pastor Davis. Pastor Davis will be preaching at Union Memorial Baptist Church, Sunday, October 15th at 3 p.m. How can we pray for you? If you have a prayer request, please send them to care at nazarenebaptist.org. Happy birthday to all of our October born members. We have three ways to give. You can give your offering by mail to our P.O. Box. You can give your offering through Tithely to Nazarene Baptist Church. Or you can text GIVE to 833-402-2068. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come seeking your face today, seeking your presence today. God, your word says to us in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, it says, come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and you would give us rest. You said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And so, here we are, Lord, coming before you, coming before your throne. We give you all of our hurts. We give you all of our pain, our weaknesses, as well as our sorrows. Lord, we give you everything that burdens us. And in exchange, God, we receive the rest and the comfort that you offer. You said in your word, Lord, that we would find rest for our souls in you. And we believe that today, that it is well with our souls. We declare today that it is well with us it is well with our homes and with our finances. We declare that it is well with us because we are in you, Lord. You are the Lord that goes ahead of us. You are the one who is with us. And we know, God, that you would never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us. And for that, we will never fear, nor will we be dismayed. So here we are, Lord. You know all of the areas that are hurting. You know where the pain is, whether it be physically or emotionally. So God, we invite now, oh God, the Holy Spirit to help us to release and to let go of everything that is hurting us. Everything that hinders our growth and our development as Christians. Lord, grant us healing from all forms of pain. And Father, I pray that you would give us the hope and the courage each day to persevere and to remain strong. And then, Lord, help us to realize that our pain is only an opportunity to find out more about you and your power. 
So Lord, comfort our souls and make us whole again. Help us to remain patient because we know that everything that you do, you do in your perfect timing. So order our steps in your direction. We believe, oh God, that today you've heard our prayer. And we believe, oh God, that you would answer it in your own perfect timing. But in the meantime, Lord, we will cling to your promises and we will praise you through all the good and through all the not so good. Because you alone, oh God, are God. And it's to you alone be all glory and honor. It is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray this prayer this morning. Amen. Well, hello, Nazarene. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. The Lord is good. Giving honor to God, giving honor to Pastor Davis. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, uh, it's an honor to be here. So let's go ahead, have a word of prayer, and get into our morning message for today. Father, I come right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that I would decrease and your Holy Spirit would increase. Have your way. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Use me for your glory. I pray that lives are changed and touched and people are even saved today as a result of hearing the broadcast. Bless you this Sunday morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. The first car that I ever bought was a 1986 Chevrolet Sprint. This car had no AC, no power windows, no power locks, no power steering. As a matter of fact, it had three cylinders. It was basically a glorified lawnmower. And I drove that car and I drove that car and I drove that car and I drove it until I drove it in the ground. Now, the reason I drove the car in the ground because I really did not appreciate what I had. Unfortunately, there are a number of congregations, and Nazarene is not one of them, but there are a number of congregations that don't really appreciate what they have in their pastor. Turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 12 through 13, because our morning's lesson is entitled, Celebrate Your Clergy. Celebrate your clergy. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13 reads, And we urge you, brethren and sisters, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. This book was written by Paul. It was written to the church at Thessalonica. It was written between 50 and 51 AD. It was written from Corinth. And the purpose that this book was being written or was written was for the purpose of sanctification and salvation. The key word is sanctification. The key verses are 12 and 13 of chapter 3 and verses 16 through 18 of chapter 4. The key chapter is chapter 4. The two-part breakdown of this book is the personal experience, chapters 1 through 3, and the practical exhortation, chapters 4 through 5. In our text, Paul is encouraging the body of believers in Thessalonica, this is a local church, to appreciate their leadership. Pastors and preachers often experience the trials and tribulations of ministry, but receive little thanks. The expectations are high, but the gratitude can be very low. Again, Nazarene, you're a tremendous congregation. I know you treat your pastor well. As a matter of fact, many times I've been to your ministry, you've treated me with excellence, and so I appreciate you. But we don't know who's listening to the broadcast, and there's nothing wrong with a refresher or a reminder every now and then. So I encourage you today to uh, celebrate 
your clergy. So how can you show your pastor? And how can I show my pastor that, that we really appreciate them? How can we do this? Well, Paul gives us the answer. We look in uh, chapter five, verse 12, the first part and says, and we urge you. Well, first of all, let's look at that. And we, who is the we? Paul, he, he was a man who believed in teamwork. Paul realized he could not pull off ministry by himself. He had Barnabas and, and others, John, Mark, and all, all kind of people to help him in, in ministry. And pastor, if you're going to pull off ministry, it is important to bring in your team, bring in the other preachers and, and leaders and so on and so forth. So, so this that's why I titled, entitled the message, Celebrate Your Clergy, because not only does your pastor need encouragement, but the other clergy need, past, uh, need encouragement as well. And so he says, and we urge you, the reason why Paul is so demonstrative about this and has so much passion when he says, we urge you, is because Paul was a pastor and he knows that pastoring, or he knew that pastoring could be a, a very thankless type of service. And so he says, and we, and my team, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to recognize. Let's stop right there. How do you show your pastor that you appreciate them? Simply by your recognition. Recognition. Who doesn't want to be recognized? Everybody wants to be recognized. I remember back in the day uh, when it was somebody's birthday and say, oh, such and such birthday. And they'd have a birthday and, you know, that would be it. Nowadays, people don't celebrate one day for their birthday. Some people celebrate uh, the whole week or the whole month for their birthday. Why? Because they want to be recognized. Everybody wants to be recognized. And so, therefore, we show our appreciation to our pastors by our recognition. It's unfair for a congregation to expect their pastor to, to be there for them, but when the shoe is on the other foot, the congregation is nowhere to be found. Celebrate your clergy. Celebrate your clergy. Recognize uh, your, th that your pastor, Pastor Davis, his, his position is God-ordained. He didn't put himself there. God put him there. He is, God, he is a gift to Nazarene. God gave him to you all to, to feed you and to teach you uh, and to, to uh, grow you up in the Lord. That's why God gave him to you. And so it is important to celebrate the clergy. How long, let me ask you a question, how long does it take to send a card, give a handshake, Give a text, send a text message, a phone call, a simple thank you or a word of encouragement. How about this? Pastor, I am praying for you. You don't know that that those words right there, they, they could go a very long way, a very long way. Let me let me read an article to you that um, I recently read. It says, pray for your pastor. Ninety seven percent of pastors have been betrayed falsely accused or hurt by their trusted friends. 70% of pastors battle depression, 7,000 churches close each year, 1,500 pastors quit each month, 10% will retire a pastor. 80% of pastors feel discouraged. 94% of pastors' families feel the pressure of ministry. 78% of pastors have no close friends because their trust has been violated a, a, a lot of times. You put confidence in people. Uh, th there's a level of, of, of confidence. So not, you, you know, the Bible says put no confidence in man, but when you give somebody uh, an assignment and they, they just let it fall through, I mean, you're, you're believing that because we're dealing with adults here. And so you're saying, man, come on, let's, let's get it done. Why can't we get this done? And so, so, that those kinds of things work on pastors. 90% 90, 90 of pastors report working 55 to 75 hours a week. Pray for your pastor. Recognize or acknowledge that, that Pastor Davis has been a blessing to you. 
Let them know, Pastor, your ministry has been a blessing to me. What's so important about celebrating your clergy and why is it necessary? Point number two, you all ask the right questions. You're a great class. Point number two, we've already seen by your recognition. Secondly, because of his, listen to me, because of his responsibilities, not responsibility, responsibilities. Let's look at the text again. The text says, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, to recognize those, here we go with that concept of team, those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So they labor, they're over you, they admonish you. Pastors and clergy don't have responsibility. Pastors and clergy have responsibilities. See, when you're home, it's home sleep at night, they're thinking about the ministry in many cases. They're thinking about you in many cases. He says, Paul says, labor, the labor, their labor. And, and don't let anybody fool you. Oh, preaching is, is you know, that's, that's not work. Preaching, teaching, pastoring is work. It's labor. Otherwise, God wouldn't have said it. God said it through the apostle Paul. It's labor. Ministry is hard work. Preparing for messages and dealing with people and situations, it's labor. And then he, he, he talks about uh, leadership, those that are over you. Leadership, let me, let me say it's bad English, but good theology. Leadership ain't easy. It's not easy. Sometimes leaders get tired. Sometimes leaders go through things. And so look at, look at Moses and uh, you don't have to turn there, but in Exodus chapter 17, verse 12, Moses got tired. They were in a battle and his, his hands were raised by Aaron and her. And when his hands were held up by Aaron and her, and as he was sitting down, they were winning the war. When his hands went down, they would lose the war. Listen, it is important to hold up the hands of your pastor. Tell, tell your pastor, pastor, I want to, let me hold your hands up. Let me hold you up. And, and a lot of times holding them up, holding their hands up is holding them up in prayer. And not only that, not only labor, not only leadership, but lessons. He says, and admonish. These are lessons. Sometimes uh, uh, these, these lessons are very hard lessons that the pastor has to share as it pertains to the sheep. Watch this. Pastors have responsibilities, plural, perform weddings, home goings. They preach to you. They pray for you, pour into you, problem solve, plan, project vision, point you to your purpose, dot, 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 dot. All the while, he's in pain, having personal problems, having to deal with pressure, taking private time from his family and sharing it with the local assembly, being persecuted, promises made to him, but the promises are broken. Pastor, I got that. I'm, I'll take care of that. And it doesn't get done. Pastors, they, they sometimes plead with the congregation, members in the congregation to get involved in the ministry. Why? Because many hands make light work. Celebrate your clergy. Don't take the leadership for granted. Don't do that. Don't take the leadership for granted. Celebrate people. My, my grandmother, she had a saying, give people their flowers while they're living. Give your pastor, give the clergy their flowers. And then point number three, point number three, by how do you, how do you show your pastor that you appreciate him? Nazarene, number one, we've already seen by your recognition. And why should you do this? 
because of all of his responsibilities. Right now, you're in a major, major building project situation. All of that's on the pastor. When he looks at it, he, 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 he's discouraged. I know I would be. I know I would be. I've driven past there. And you, you, you're thinking this has to be handled because we want to get back into the house of the Lord. And so the last part, by your respect, by your respect. That's how you let your pastor, that's one of three ways how you let your pastor know that you appreciate them by having respect for them. It says in verse 13, esteem them, them who? Your pastor, your clergy, your leadership, esteem them, how? Very highly. In other words, don't take them for granted. Now, you never worship the pastor. You never worship the leadership team. You never worship the clergy. That's reserved strictly for the Lord. But now you can esteem them. You can respect them very highly in love. Why? For their work's sake. We live, unfortunately, we live in a day and an age where people do not respect clergy or God himself. But God's word tells us otherwise. We should esteem or respect church leadership, pastors, very highly. Look at what 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, 17 says. The word says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Your pastor is worthy of double honor, not worthy of worship, but worthy of double honor. See, that's the problem. That's why God, back in the Old Testament, when you look in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, that's why God buried Moses. And nobody knew even till this day where Moses was buried or is buried. Why? Because if they knew where Moses was buried, the people back then, they would have been worshiping Moses. He was just God's vessel. Pastor Davis is God's vessel. But that vessel, because of his responsibilities and because of the recognition that he should rightfully receive, the, he, 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 he's, he's uh, worthy of double honor. Not just honor, but the Bible says double honor. Especially those who labor. There that is, there that word is again, that labor, that work. In the word and doctrine, word, the word doctrine means teaching. You say, oh, that's, that's, that's not work. It's always work. Let your pastor come to church uh, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and not studying, not preparing messages and so on and so forth. You're going to have, you're going to have something to say about it. Why? Because you, that you, you want good preaching. You want good teaching. That's what you want. And so he, he, he needs that. He needs help. He needs help to pull it off just like Paul. And so because of all that he pours into the ministry, because of all of the things that he does, even behind the scenes that you don't even have a clue to make Nazarene better for the glory of God, even all of those things, guess what? Because he's doing that, he's worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Hebrews 13, 17 B, the scripture says that they watch out for your souls. Don't you know your pastor is looking out for your soul? I said this earlier in the message, I believe that there are times when you are at home in your bed or have on a movie and he's thinking about Nazarene, the local assembly. He's thinking about the next step. Where do we go from here, Lord? You have the luxury of just laying down, going to sleep, counting sheep. <sighs> 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 
But like any pastor, there are times where there are sleepless nights, where pastors just look up at the ceiling and talking to God in the middle of the night because of all that has to be done as it relates to the ministry. So they watch out for your souls. Pastors look out for your souls. A true pastor cares about your soul. A true pastor cares where you spend eternity. And it says, and one day they, they who, those pastors, those, those uh, rulers, those elders, those preachers, will give an account to God for you. Pastor Davis one day is going to have to give an account to God for you, Nazarene. That's an awesome responsibility. But it says, let them do so with joy. And so, in other words, when Pastor Davis stands before the Lord, he's going to say, Brother so and so, how was he, Pastor Davis? And Pastor Davis hopefully will say, that was a great brother right there, Lord. He, of course, you know, he gave me a lot of encouragement. He prayed for me. And then that means he's presenting him with joy. You don't want it to be a thing where, how's this person, uh, Pastor Davis, or whatever name the Lord has for your pastor, because uh, we're going to get new names in heaven. But whatever name he calls uh, your pastor in heaven, come on, he's going to call the roll and say, what about so-and-so? Of course, God already knows, but he's going to give an account. I don't know how that's going to be done, but he'll give an account. And you don't want him to call your name and you say, brother such and such or sister such and such. And Pastor Davis goes, oh, Lord, they gave me all kinds of headaches. You don't want that because the scripture says here, let me just read it through. The scripture says, that they watch out for your souls and one day will give an account to God for you. Let them do so with joy and not grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. So you want to celebrate your clergy because they have, they're responsible for you. You say, I'm grown. No, the Bible says that your pastor is responsible for you. They have to give an account to God for you. So don't give your pastor a hard way to go. Why? If you give your pastor a hard way to go, that's it's only hurting you because when he gives an account to God for you, it, the Bible says that it would be in, unprofitable for you. In other words, you're going to lose some reward as a result of it. In our main scripture text, it says to respect him very highly in love. How does this look? How does this look? In, it, it, it looks like this. Love him enough to watch out for his back. He at your back. <coughs> Pardon me. You have his back. How does this look? Love him enough to love his wife and family. Love him enough to speak up for him when other people dog their pastors at the family reunion or on your jobs. Say, no, 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 no. My pastor does not do that. I have a good pastor. Why? For what they do. The Bible says for their work's sake. There it is again. Pastors are laboring. Some people are going to criticize pastors and preachers regardless, but make it up in your mind that what you're going to do is celebrate your clergy. Celebrate your clergy. One day it was a little girl. Let me just give you a word of encouragement, pastor and leadership team. There's this little girl and the little girl was at a recital and she had to play her solo part on the piano. And as she was playing her solo part, 
she was hitting bad notes here and hitting bad notes there and messing up here and messing up there. But the little girl did not quit. She just kept on playing. And she finished. When she finished, she came from behind the stool and the piano and she stood in front of the audience and bowed and nobody reacted whatsoever because of all of how she played. Except one man way in the back. He stood up and he applauded. So the little girl smiled and went backstage and one of her peers said, what in the world are you smiling about? You don't have anything to smile about because nobody applauded except that one man in the back. The girl said, well, what you fail to realize is the man that was smiling in the back, that was my father. And it doesn't matter what everybody else does as long as my father is pleased. That's all that really matters. Let me tell you, clergy, listen, keep doing what you're doing for the glory of God. The Bible says, whatever you do, do heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. And, 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 and as long as your heavenly father is pleased, as long as, as he gets the glory, as long as a smile is on his face, it doesn't matter what everyone else does. That's my word of encouragement to you. Now, let me ask you this question. This is very important. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus today? If you do not know Jesus, if you do not have a personal relationship with the Lord, you can right now. All you have to do is invite them in by repeating after me, inviting them into your life. Dear Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I pray that you would forgive me of my sins, wash me in your blood. Lord, I place my faith alone and your finished work on Calvary's cross in exchange for my sins. Come into my life because your word says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I will be saved. So Lord, save me right now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're my brother and my sister, and I celebrate you. And uh, that was a tremendous uh, thing that you did by inviting Jesus into your life. You are now in the family of God. And why don't you get in touch with people at Nazarene, the, the tremendous uh, body of, of believers at Nazarene Baptist Church, and uh, they would love to be able to share with you. Pastor Day was uh, would love to be your pastor. They, he has a wonderful uh, family, great family man, great congregation. So Nazarene, listen, celebrate your clergy. Celebrate your clergy. This is Minister Rob Richardson. I'm so glad to be with you all today. God bless you. Grace and peace, everyone. This is Pastor Davis. I pray that the word you heard today not only blessed your life at this particular moment, but I pray that the word you heard has met you at the right time and in the right situation, so that you know that you've heard from the Lord Jesus Christ today. And now you have an opportunity to establish a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're ready, we encourage you to take that leap of faith and give your life to Jesus Christ. Just simply admit that you're a sinner in need of forgiveness, then confess your sins. Thank God for Jesus' death on the cross that paid the price for your sins. Then ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for the wrong things I've done. Please forgive me. I believe your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender my life to you. Now, Father, help me to do your will. And thank you again for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. God just gave you eternal life. Please let us know by emailing us at the address below and someone will contact you. We look forward to hearing from you. We love you in Jesus' name. God bless you and welcome to the family.